Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be going over the new Anastasia Beverly Hills Norvina Pro Pigment Palette Volume 3. This is the latest and I believe the last of the collection. I'm not sure, they could definitely surprise us, but they did just come out with the Carly Bible Palette, so I don't think that there's going to be another one, but again, they could surprise us. I have five different looks for you guys, five full on looks. I took my time with this palette. There's no one eye and one eye, two different looks, no mascara. I took my time. With all the different palette releases that have been coming out that have required multiple looks, I feel like I have over exfoliated my eyes. So I decided to take my time with this, do each look each day, and then just upload it whenever I was ready. And I am finally ready and I have my thoughts and everything. So I'm gonna give you guys all the information about this and then we will get into those five looks and at the end I will rank these and tell you how I feel about this palette but you should already know if you watched my favorites. Anywho, this is what the palette looks like. Clearly I've had it in my hand the entire time. You have this beautiful peachy orange tone on the front along with the gold butterflies which I think is just a stunning touch. Again, this is the same kind of heavy, sturdy plastic packaging like the other ones and you're getting that ginormous mirror on the inside. That's my cow painting right there you can see his nose <laughs> sorry distracted here are the 25 new shades that you're getting for $60 you are getting pressed pigments in here matte shades and metallics I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the swatches a1 matte chartreuse yellow a2 matte vibrant orange a3 matte harvest pumpkin a4 fresh green with silver sparkle a5 matte intense red orange b1 metallic aqua b2 matte jade with a gold sparkle b3 matte hot flamingo pink b4 matte royal fuchsia b5 matte light apricot into the seas we have c1 metallic sparkling white wine c2 matte candy apple C3, matte baked cinnamon. C4, matte mulberry. C5, titanium teal with a gold sparkle. D1, matte warm cider. D2, pale peach with a gold sparkle. D3, matte true lime green. D4, metallic orange with a gold sparkle. D5, peach nectar with a gold sparkle. And then lastly, the E's. E1, matte shamrock green. E2, matte merlot. E3, matte vibrant coral. E4, matte dandelion yellow. And then lastly, E5, metallic magenta with a pink iridescent shift. Something I noticed that I don't think I noticed before until I was getting into all the palette comparisons online. I was like going, doing research before I did this video. I saw that this one is listed as limited edition as well as the second one. So both of these are listed as limited edition on Sephora, but then the original was not. So then I thought, okay, well, is that a mistake? I went to the Anastasia Beverly Hills website and it's not saying that the first one is limited edition either, but it does say that number three and number two are limited. I don't know about the first one. I don't know if it's a typo or if the first one is just going to stay in the line, but I just wanted to go ahead and mention that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get into the five different looks. I'm gonna start off with all the looks that I had already done and then I'm gonna do this look last. Let's get started. Zoeva 227 and the shade B5. I'm gonna start this directly into the crease. It's okay if it gets on the lid. I'm using quite a fluffy brush, so I anticipate that happening anyway. I'm gonna go back and forth windshield wiper motions all the way to the outer corner and inner corner, and then slowly buff this upward. This is the shade I will use for my transition.
same brush and I'm going to go in with C3. I'm going to start this shade on the outer corner first. And then I'm going to bring it into the crease. And lightly blend it upwards. Not nearly as high as we took that last shade. Still sticking with the same brush, I'm grabbing the shade E2. I am further going to deepen up the outer V with this. I'm going to bring it into the crease, but not all of the way in. I'm going to blend this upward just on the outer portion of the eye. Using a clean brush, this is a Tom Ford number 13. I'm just going to go around the edges of everything and make sure it's nicely blended out. Sonia G, Builder 3, and E3. I'm going to start at the front. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm going to start at the front portion of the lid and then just tap it into place. And when the majority of, when the majority, slow down Mel, of the product is off the brush, I'm going to go over the edge of the last shades we lay down. Then I'm going to go back in with the Zoeva brush, no additional product. Just going to go over the edge of that so that they blend together. D5 on an Eason W23. I'm going to apply this to the brow arch. Royal and Langnickel BOM48 in the shade C3. I'm applying this directly to the lower lash line. Just blending that out, and that's probably going to be the only color I put down here. Going back in with D5 on a Stilazzi Mini Definer. I'm going to finish off by applying this to the inner corner. Then I'm going to go off camera and add Milk Boss Liner to the top inner rim and just mascara. Refer PO7A and A3. I'm going to start by taking this directly into the crease. Back and forth, windshield wiper motions as always, and circular motions to blend it upwards. Refer PO7C in the shade B2. I'm going to apply this directly into the crease. Make a slight harsh line out of it first. Inner to outer corner. Then I'm going to use small circular motions to start blending it upward. If I need more product on my brush, I always start in the crease first before pushing it upward. Because if I don't, then I'm going to have too much color in the transition part than what I want. So I always start in the crease because I want the majority of the pigmentation to be there. And then circular motions, blending it upward. Eason W21 and C5. I am going to pack this all over the lid. Packing and swiping motions. I'm taking it all the way up to the crease, but I'm not going any further. Eason 
Isom W23 in the shade C1. I'm going to apply this directly underneath my brow arch. Refer PO7E and back in with the shade B2. I am going to take this right up against the lower lash line. And I like to smoke it out. Wayne Goss number five in the shade A1. I'm going to take this on the inner corner, blend it out just a little bit, and then I'm gonna go add on liner to my inner rim, Boss Milk Liner, and then mascara. Zoeva 227 and the shade D1. I'm going to start this on the very outer corner. Kind of tapping it into place, halfway over the lid. And then I am going to start working it upward. I want to focus this mainly just on this outer portion. I'll take it about three quarters of the way into the crease, but I'm not going to bring this all the way to the inner corner. Really want to make sure I get this outer portion smoked out and brought up pretty high. Using the same brush, I'm going to grab the shade C2. Again, starting on the very outer corner. Basically just going right over the last shade we laid down. Then I'm going to bring this into the crease three quarters of the way in, and I'm going to blend this upward. But I'm not gonna take this shade too high. Clean brush, this is a Wayne Goss 26S. I'm just gonna go around the edges of everything and make sure it's blended out. MAC 221 and the shade C4. I'm using this shade to add just a little bit more depth to the outer corner. Just kind of tapping it on top. I'll bring it into the crease area, but I'm not going to blend it up too high. I don't want it to be a harsh line, but I also don't want it to be too smoky with this color. So I'm going to be very gentle, very soft motions with it. And then I can go back in with that brush I used to blend earlier, just like the clean one that's not clean anymore, <laughs> and to go around the edges. That will help blend it for you. MAC 239S and D2. I am going to apply this to the front portion of the lid first. Then I am going to start tapping over the last shades we lay down so we get a blend out of them. Going back in with the shade D1 on a Royal and Lang Nickel BOM 48. I am going to apply this to my lower lash line. I'm going to try not taking it down as far as I normally do. And then I'm going to leave the inner corner blank. And then I am just going to go add on inner rim liner from Milk, the Boss Liner, and Mascara. Wayne Goss number 18 in the shade B4. I am going to start this right on the outer corner. And as always, I'm going to work it upwards.
I'm starting off by really just kind of concentrating this on the outer portion of the eye because this is where I want it to be the darkest, right here in the crease. And then I want to smoke it up and out on this outer corner. As there's less product on my brush, I will start bringing it up further. And this is just one dip into the shadow. So you don't have to continuously go in. You just want to make sure you apply the majority on the lid and then start working it upward slowly. Now I'm gonna bring it inward. As you can see, it's not very dark, and that's because there's not a lot of product left on my brush. So I'm just kind of feathering this in. So you have a hint of it, but not too much. I'm going in once more. So I want it to be just a little bit deeper, but again, I'm starting on the lid and then working upward. Smith 247 and B3, just like the purple, I'm gonna start this on the very outer corner. I'm just kind of tapping it into place. bringing it into the crease, back and forth windshield wiper motions, and then circular motions to blend it upward. I am bringing the shade all the way to the very inner corner. Now I'm gonna take B1 on a MAC 242, starting on the very inner corner. Look at that, that's so pretty. I'm going to be placing this on the lid, tapping it first, and then swiping. And again, tapping to blend over the last shades. Same 242 in the shade C1. I'm going to blend this right over the inner corner. E some W21 and E5. I'm gonna tap this on the outer corner because I can't stand this outside edge not being metallic like the rest of the eye. So I'm gonna do this, just kind of pressing it into place. Going over the blue a little bit, but I will have to touch up that blue again. And as you can see, I am getting fallout with these metallic shades. Picking up that blue again, starting on the center of the lid, and then just slightly tapping over the purple. Definitely like this better than the matte pink being on the edge. I just feel like it's a little bit more seamless. When it's like all one texture then I'll go back in with the purple just kind of go back and forth a little bit now I'm gonna go back in with C1 and this is a refer prototype brush I believe it's the P21 it's a lot like the Mac 242 the original one and I am just highlighting the brow arch and kind of blending it out just a little bit softening up the pink area after I get this laid down, I am going to go add winged liner. I don't want to add anything to my lower lash line today. Starting off with the shade A1 on a BK Beauty 202, I am going to start by placing this on the front portion of the eye, the inner corner, laying it down first and then lightly blending it upward. I'm only gonna take it about this far in to the crease and transition area, but I'm not going to pass that.
Same shade on a Wayne Goss number 20, and I'm just going to apply this directly underneath where it is up top to the lower lash line. BK Beauty 201 in the shade D3. Starting off by tapping this on the center portion of the lid. Then I'm slowly going to bring it directly upward. I'm going to lightly start blending it into the lighter green. And working it over in the crease area. Adding a bit more to the lid. Going back in with the original 202 from BK Beauty. I'm just blending these together. I didn't pick up any additional product. And then again the 201. Just making sure that these blend together really nicely. Same shade, Wayne Goss number 20, and again going directly below where I applied it up top. E1 on a Sonia G Worker 3. I'm going to start by tapping this right on the outer portion of the eye. And then I'm going to blend this upward and rounding out this edge. I shouldn't say round because I'm kind of making a little bit more of a V out of it. Same color and a Wayne Goss 27S to the very outer corner on the lower lash line connecting to the top. Now I'm going to take C1 on a MAC 242. I'm sure everybody knows what I was about to do with this. <laughs> Brow arch and then blending out very softly. I have my hand on the very back end of the brush so that I can get a very soft blend out of it. Just kind of cleaning up the edges and turn it sideways right here and back flat here. Refer number three, and I'm going to take a tiny bit of this right on the inner corner. Then I'm going to go add on liner on my inner rim and just mascara. Just FYI, I'm going a little bit more ham with this inner corner highlight than I had anticipated. I just like it. I like the way it looks, um, but I will go in and blend out the edges whenever I'm done. But I just want to let you guys know. I finished off this eye look with Milk Boss Liner, Tough Inner Rim, and then Just Mascara. I did wear lashes in one of the looks. It was the one with the purple and the pink and then the blue on the eye. And I was wearing the Kiss Flirty Lash, so just in case anybody was wondering. Now for my thoughts. You guys should already know that this one is my favorite because I put it in my favorites for the month of September. I told you guys that this one has my favorite color scheme. It's my favorite to use out of the three. So if I was gonna put them in order, it would be this one's my favorite, volume three, volume one, number two, and then volume three two is the third that I would choose. And I'm gonna go ahead and compare these really quickly in case you haven't seen them. The first volume is this right here, which definitely leans more on the purple side with a few pops of color, hence the purple packaging. And then the, I definitely just dropped that. Yep, 100%. <laughs> and then the second one is a blue and green themed palette. And I think this one is very, 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 very bright. I really enjoy it, but it is my least favorite out of the three. Still like it though. It's not a quality thing or anything like that. It's just a preference thing. And I think that's how it's going to be whenever you go to pick one if you're interested in them, or maybe you like all three, but it's gonna be dependent on what colors you gravitate towards. The reason why this one is my favorite is because of the colors. I really, really like these the best out of all of them. And I feel like I can get really wearable looks out of this and my pops of color as well. So it's not as intimidating as some of the other ones. I love this shade right here. Here. This pink worked beautifully. All of these shades are pigmented. Some of them did have a little bit more fallout than others. I got quite a bit of fallout with today's look, but again, fallout does not bother me. But if it does bother you, just remember that. Now there is one thing that I want to say. 
with these lighter shades like this one here this one and this one I would definitely suggest using those on an unset eye like my eye look today I don't feel like it would have been as vibrant had I done it on top of my primer and then I had set it with matte blanc type like I used to I never do that anymore but I just want to mention that because I can kind of tell with these going on top of each other that if I were to apply this lighter shade on top of an already set eye, I feel like I wouldn't have got the punch out of it that I did end up getting. I love this look. I just, I, I live for it. And I know it's been a lot of greens here lately, but I still, I had to do it. I really just had to do it. Anywho, like I said, this is my favorite out of the bunch. Let me know down below which of the palettes are your favorite, or if you're like, nope, 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 these are definitely too much color for me. Again, if you think that, I really think that this is one you should check out because it has a lot of the more wearable tones in there. But let me know which one's your favorite. Let me know which look is your favorite. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.